Ellen just got a little fright because she's never seen a crazy place like this before. Who would have thought the best guide in all of Tibet could end up so out of their depth? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so anyway, Paimon just had the weirdest dream. There were cattle mooing constantly. like the Conqueror of Demons is awake. I'm fine. Don't worry. Karma I carry is dangerous to humans. Keep your distance. Well, I have Adeptite blood in me, so I wouldn't worry too much. Even so. What happened while Paimon was sleeping? How did Xiao get here? With a little help, I was able to find my way here. Conqueror of Demons, could you tell us what happened before he joined us? No need to be so formal. Just call me Shell. Oh, sure. <sighs> it was a senseless battle. I came here looking for someone, but when I found them, they weren't anything like how I expected. Madam Ping says that you usually base yourself at Wang Shuin to guard the main road through Dihua Marsh. It's unusual for you to go looking for someone yourself. Are they an adeptus? <sighs> I'm looking for a Yaksha called Bosatius. Bosatius? Is that one of the five Yakshas? Like you? I thought that you were the only one left. Aren't the other four... gone from the world? You could say that. But Bosatius' body is the only one that was never found. Yakshas deal with God's remains all the time and we become tainted by karma. Over time, it inevitably drives us to madness. The last time I saw Bosatius, it was the day he lost his mind. He left. No one knew where he went, and I never heard from him again. But Bosatius was the eldest of us. He once told us, as Yakshas we will experience countless wars. Whether we live or die, we must promise to take care of each other, and know each other's fate to the very end. Did he forget his promise because he lost his sanity? It's possible, but I did not. I am the sole survivor. So it is my duty to find out the fates of the others. What made you come to the chasm? Did you hear something about Bosatius being here? Did you know that 500 years ago, the beasts of Conria invaded the chasm. That war lasted a long time. It is said that in the midst of the battle, a brave Yaksha was seen putting up a heroic fight. But no one knew the Yaksha's name. But there were many more than five Yakshas in total, so there's no guarantee it was Bosatius. Wow. You must think it was probably him if you came here to investigate, right? I am by no means certain, and I didn't have any other clues except for this one. But Bosatius was proud. If he had taken part in that war, he would have announced his name. So at first, I thought the nameless Yaksha couldn't be him. <clears throat> Wait, so it was Bosatius you were fighting with? Did he injure you? Yes. No way! 
the invasion of monsters from Conria, the battle in the chasm, and Yelon's ancestor. I have a feeling that somehow these are all connected. Life is full of coincidences, but this is too much of a coincidence. Could this all be related to the fantastic compass mentioned in the will, too? What will? Oh, right. I came here because of a will. Maybe it's not something you've come across much before, but both mortals and adepti sometimes write out their final wishes so somebody else will carry them out after they've passed. It's known as a last will and testament. And this can be done at any time? Whoa, whoa! You want to write a will? Now? <sighs> it was no accident that you saw my illusion that day. This place used your desire to find me to create a trap that you would willingly walk into. Pure deception is easy to spot, but the truth laced with lies can be a fatal combination. What you heard were really things that I said. It made sure you heard my real voice to create panic. This one-way communication was the bait. If we hadn't managed to get in touch through the spatial rift, we may well have lost someone by now. Rather than murdering in cold blood, this space seems more intent on consuming souls. How is this even possible? Our opponent is very clever. It is not safe to stay here. Everyone, whether I accomplish what I came here to do or not, I must find a way to get you out safely. Hmm. I rejoin to warn you that it's extremely dangerous here. If you stay here too long, this space may well devour you. But... how do you know? You might become a shadow of your former self, wandering the underground like a lost soul. Hmm. Sounds like you saw them too. Galen, you're back! I've been back a while. I was listening to the conversation. I've seen some strange things here too. Objects that shouldn't be here. Strange figures appearing, then vanishing. I don't think any of it is real. So they're just illusions? At first I had the same thought. But it's not that simple. There may come a day when these illusions become real and attack you. From what you were saying a moment ago, it sounds like you know a way out of here. I can't say for sure. It's just a guess. As Yenfei said, this space is chaotic and unstable, but it has its weaknesses. By attacking the point where both spaces connect, I was able to create a rift and move from one to the other. So, if I use all the energy I have, I may be able to tear a passage out of this chaotic space. Really? So powerful attacks can affect the space itself? I had wondered if that was a possibility. Whoa, 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 whoa. But what do you mean by all the energy you have? I mean, it will take everything I've got. Wait a minute! When you said you were gonna get us out safely, you mean you're gonna stay here? You can't be serious. <sighs> I saw Bosatius underground. That's when I realized the horror of this place. A single blast can only create a very small opening. To send you back to the outside world, I may need to continuously channel power in order to keep the tunnel open. I know how to fight to the bitter end. I can do this. No. No way. Even if what you're saying is true, I can't agree to this. I'm on neither! It's not much of an escape plan if we gotta leave someone behind! It's only a good or bad plan if there are other options to compare it to. But that's not the situation we're in right now. I doubt you'd still be stuck here if anyone had a better idea. B but can you be certain that your plan will work? I cannot. What is wrong with you? You can't bet your life on something if you don't even know it's gonna work! It's not worth it! To conclude, I'm not agreeing to this plan. What if I told you, this is my last will? 
You? <sighs> That's your strategy, huh? No offense, but we have no guarantee this plan of yours will succeed, or even that it's safe. You said it yourself. Yakshas pose a danger to humans. You really expect us to accept your self-righteous plan just because you say so? The battlefield is a treacherous place. Every opportunity you take, you put everything on the line for. If you fear sacrifice and failure, you can never be victorious. I've been in my fair share of treacherous battles, so I know full well that you never bring up extreme measures like this until the very, very end. <laughs> You say these things in the hope that we will understand and accept them. But if you don't even know that your self-sacrifice is going to pay off, all you're doing is hurting morale. Besides, if you were really so determined to end it all, you wouldn't have given us the opportunity to share our opinions. You think you're oh so cold and ruthless, but I'm not buying it. And anyway, losing one of us so the rest can escape? <laughs> Some victory that is. Yelon, don't be so harsh. <sighs> Point is, it's not time for drastic measures yet. It's possible there's a hidden passage leading to the exit that we just haven't discovered. What if there isn't? Or if we don't find it? And in the end... I'm so weak that I don't have the strength left to sacrifice myself. What do you propose we do then? As things stand, there's no difference between sacrificing you and trying to find another way out, in terms of the likelihood of success. If we can't say that one strategy is better than the other, we certainly shouldn't be rushing into a risky course of action. Did someone say a strong enough strike can break us out of this place? Yeah, that's right, I heard ya. No one's staying behind to let anyone else out, all right? Enough talk, it's time for action! Come on, whatever you are! Let's see how long you manage to keep us trapped in here after I'm finished with you! Uh, easy now. Have a taste of this! Yeah! <laughs> <sighs> 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 Woo! Okay, so I didn't tear the whole place down. <clears throat> but check it out, new path! <laughs> if you need a hero, I'm the man for the job. Seen this coming. Ugh, why do you always have to do things like this? Shinobu. What happened to Ito? Did he pass out? <coughs> the boss used up all his strength in one punch. Maybe that's the reason he managed to tear open a passage. <sighs> Let me see if there's any way I can stabilize it. He did this because he heard us arguing, right? <sighs> the thing with Boss is, he just can't stand conflict between teammates. Whenever we get into an argument in the Arataki Gang, he always goes and does something shocking to calm everyone down. <sighs> Today, he's done it again. He may not have known you for very long, but when he said he sees everyone as part of the same team, he truly means that. Mm. Another thing with bosses, he hates it when other people sacrifice themselves, but he always seems to end up doing it himself. That said, there's a slight distinction to be made with him. When he does things like this, he doesn't really think he's sacrificing himself, because he genuinely believes that he's strong enough to defeat any obstacle he's facing. Giant ego alert! And wasn't he just doing the same thing Shell suggested? <sighs> so stupid. The boss is hardly open to persuasion. Besides, he always acts without thinking. There's no doubt that he really thought he was about to solve everything in one hit. Ugh, it's not just him either. 
the other guys in the Arataki gang are more or less the same. That's why they need someone like me to clean up after them. I couldn't stop him if I tried, so I might as well just let him do his thing. Besides, often his harebrained intuition is surprisingly on point. We might punch our way out of here yet. Uh, Ito, please tell Paimon you're okay. I'm sorry. Don't be. You have nothing to apologize for. Both you and Yelan made some very good points. Still, if this was an Arataki gang issue and you were one of our members, I have to say I'd side with Yelan on this one. The boss definitely wasn't sacrificing himself. He firmly believed that we'd be able to find a way out through the passage he opened up, and he's certainly not expecting to be left behind. Everyone's important. We have to support each other if we're going to get out of here. Your survival is of huge importance to some people. Uh, no, to a whole lot of people. Aww, Shinobu. Everyone, let's all do our best to try and find a way out. There's still a chance. I'm sure we can escape. Leave the boss to me. Don't worry. <sighs> Everyone? It seems this passage doesn't lead to the outside world, but deeper inside. What the? So Ito's efforts were in vain? No, it's still worth exploring. I'll go and take a look first. Aha, uh -huh, I see. I'm with you. Uh, what? So far, I still haven't found the thing I came looking for. That magical device, remember? If this domain has the power to project our imaginations or the things we're searching for into reality, well, maybe I can use that to my advantage to track it down. Oh, right! No wonder she keeps telling us to keep going. If it's a magical device, it must be super powerful. Well, I can't guarantee that, but it's worth a try. I will find a way. Let him go. But if you're planning on going into that domain too, then come with me. After all, I'm just a lawyer. <laughs> we'll be safer if we team up. By the way, um, you and Xiao seem pretty close, huh? Yelan got a bit worked up just now, so I just wanted to apologize on her behalf. I have to say, though, if Yelan hadn't spoken out like she did, I'm not sure she would have gotten through to him. Also, self-sacrifice is something Yelan feels strongly about. She tried to stop whoever it was. From what I know, she's lost comrades in the line of duty before, and then was rescued herself. Maybe being a survivor is what makes her so against seeing other people sacrifice themselves. How can things ever be the same again, knowing that your life was saved when others weren't? In a way, salvation can also be a burden. If I were her, I'm not sure I would have done anything different. Oh, wait, one second. I'll be right there. Yeah! <sighs> right, that's much safer. Since Ito can't fight right now, I've cast a spell to protect you guys. Thank you, Senpai. Please, be careful. We will. Same to you. All right, Traveler, let's go. <gasps> What's this? <gasps> Look at that huge disc in the distance. Hold on. Is that the Fantastic Compass? What? That's the best description you can come up with? It's way, way bigger than that! <sighs> well, it seems our theory checked out. In my humble legal opinion, that's almost certainly the magical device I've been looking for. It really showed up. But if this really is the Fantastic Compass... It's so huge! How the heck am I going to lug that back to my office? <clears throat> I mean, come on, Yenfei. Don't give up now. Let's investigate the area first. <gasps> what the... Are they... Are they treasure hoarders? They look familiar. 
Oh, yeah. I bumped into these rapscallions a few days ago. <sighs> Easy peasy. Just like last time. You know, when I ran into them before, I was working on a big commercial case. The defendant hired them to attack me, just to get back at me. Eh, happens all the time. Luckily, I'm well-trained in martial arts, so taking them down was a piece of cake. But these are the exact same guys as I met last time. Is this space recreating scenes from my memory? Maybe this is one of the ways our adversary intends to devour us. Unbelievable. I thought we might run into some other people here, but apparently not. The Fatui? Whose memory is this? Ah, watch out! <laughs> Just as I thought. Yalon, you're here! I will take you down no matter how many times you show up. Hey, relax. We're together now. Amateurs. And still they dare to come after me. <laughs> You've still got it. Remember how I said I'd seen some illusions myself? Those were the same words I heard last time. The space seems to be reproducing that memory. Now that you know, at least we're all on the same page. He said the word fantastic. Was he talking about the fantastic compass? Yenfei, see that thing on the ground? Yeah, we tinkered with it. That's how we met up with you. I guess it's a miniature version of the fantastic compass in the distance. It has a close connection to the entire space. Hmm. It looks somewhat familiar. Let me think. Another new space. If everywhere within this space follows the same rules, there must be another small fantastic compass somewhere around here. Osatius, I can't believe someone like you would end up as a lost soul underground. No enemies. Hold on. Wait, is the enemy hiding itself? Oh no, we should go help him. Stay back. This is my fight. Do not come near me. Enough! Phantom, be gone! Chiu, are you okay? This is my purpose. Don't worry about me. So your invisible opponent was the legendary Bosatius, Marshal Vitris? Yes. So excuse my stubbornness. Bosatius has been missing for centuries. This may have been the last time I will ever see him. He was saying something about holding the line at all costs. He fought here. The nameless Yaksha from the Legends. It was him. But didn't you say he'd always announce his name? How could his name be lost to time? What happened? <sighs> I don't know. Maybe he forgot who he was. Because the karma you spoke of drove him to madness? Osatius had already gone mad before he disappeared. There was no way of knowing if his memories were intact. He still took part in the Battle of the Chasm despite having gone mad? We Yakshas are not a race that thrive in peacetime. It's likely that he was drawn by the scent of bloody war. Slaughter is what we do best. Maybe it's the only thing we know. This battle confirmed my suspicions. As we had speculated, this space reflects information from people's minds. In other words, Despite going mad, Bosatius came here. The illusion we saw just now is the impression he left behind. This space recreated him as he was during the battle. The way he fought was so self-destructive. He couldn't possibly have survived. 
Bosatius' illusion said he'd discovered the monster's weakness and lured them underground. What kind of place could this be? Defeating Conria's monsters is no small feat, that's for sure. Guys, it could just be me, but... I think I'm suddenly feeling more tired than I was. This space is really starting to affect us. I believe Bosatius stayed here underground. But now he is gone, and only his illusion remains. If we don't leave, we may meet the same fate. Time to move on. You fought well, Bosatius. Goodbye. Looks like there's some information here. Shall we take a look? Okay, let's see. Hmm. It looks like these were letters written by the Millilith soldiers who stayed here. So, who's this Boyong they mentioned? <sighs> Boyong was one of my ancestors. The one who didn't make it back. You mean, Boyong fought alongside Bosatius? I believe so. And the Millilith soldiers were their brothers in arms. I guess now we have a pretty good idea of where everyone that went missing ended up. Yes. Uh, so scary. What happened? Come on, let's not stay here. I have a gut feeling that sooner or later we'll connect all the dots. And then, we'll finally know the truth. Still, who knows how this space is planning on revealing the answer to us. There's... Nothing here at all. What a creepy space. It has the feel of the abyss. But where are the opponents? Hmm. Your memory of what? The abyss? So, this place is created purely based on your memory? It's getting darker. spaces, the Fantastic Compass was always partially buried in the ground. But this one is lying flat, intact, as if somebody left it here. Oh, she was just a figment of your imagination? So, she appeared as an illusion because you miss her so much, huh? Yenfei, are you sure this is the fantastic compass you're looking for? I think so. There were no pictures in the will, but based on the description, it seems to check out. Yelon, what is it? From the design and build, this fantastic compass looks extremely similar to the catalysts used by my clan. I just need to do this, and... <laughs> Someone's used this before. There may be a hidden message inside. Let's get out of here and find somewhere safer. Well, well. This is not what I was expecting. Oh, seems like you've made a new discovery!
This information was left by a thaumaturge called Boyang, who, as you know, is the missing ancestor that I came here to investigate. All this information... it was left by your ancestor? Hundreds of years ago, two of my ancestors, brothers, were gifted the Fantastic Compass by someone of great importance. They brought this device to the chasm, and joined the war against the monsters of Conria. They set out together, but only one of them made it back. Minus his sanity. Karma. <laughs> Correct. One possibility is that when they fought alongside Bosatius, they were tainted by his karma. Neither of them had visions, so they wouldn't have been able to resist its effects for very long. From reading through this, it sounds like Boyang ended up staying here for good, too. <clears throat> well, this is just wonderful. So, that's it. There's no way out. What do we do? Are we gonna die here? But I doesn't wanna die! Hyman's had enough of this place! Let me out! <laughs> What was that? Huh? <clears throat> I got it! I just had a thought. Give me a second, I just need to double check. I just realized something. Okay, so on my way here, I was studying the will the whole time. But I didn't give any thought to the book that the will was inside of. I don't know it verbatim, but I have read it before. The gist of the story goes like this. Millennia ago, an Adeptus made a magic device to seal away evil monsters. Later, he made good friends with a human and gave the device to him to use as a catalyst. A few years later, great demons haunted the mountains. The mortal and the Adeptus joined forces to exorcise them using the same device. And that's not all. The book also says this. When mortal and Adepti powers are combined, one can move the heavens and shake the earth. This contraption is proof that mortals and Adepti may coexist, that there is unity between heaven and humanity. I have both Adepti and human lineage. Maybe my power can work. It worked! I mean, the effect only lasted an instant because I'm not strong enough. But still, we must be on the right track. And look! Something seems to have been activated inside the Fantastic Compass. By heaven's might and the gods of the five regions, Yaksha and Mortal together take this contraption in hand. That's their voices from when they made the seal. Bosatius and my ancestor. They sealed off this space at the top together. Hmm. I see. It makes sense now. Everyone, let's go back and meet up with Ito and Shinobu. I have a suggestion to make. Paimon can barely move anymore. Oh, why can't we get out of here? Paimon doesn't want to die. Paimon wants to stay with you. Paimon, just hang in there, okay? Trust me, there's still hope. Let's go. Shinobu, Ito, we're back! He must be exhausted, because he still hasn't woken up yet. But he's not in any serious danger, so don't worry. What about you guys? You found something, didn't you? It's written on your faces. But whatever it is, it's bad news, isn't it? Um... 
We found the fantastic compass. The previous owner left a message inside, and from the looks of it, there really is no way out of this space after all. It seems like the previous owner was stuck here forever, too. <sighs> Shoot! This isn't over yet. Listen to me. Just now, I tried channeling my power into the Fantastic Compass, and it responded. But all that did was activate the records from when the seal was created. Right, but the issue wasn't with the compass. It was with the method. Remember what the book says? When mortal and adepti powers are combined, one can move the heavens and shake the earth. Only when a mortal and an adeptus combine their powers can the fantastic compass be fully activated. I'm a mix of human and adeptus, so the fact that the fantastic compass responded to me shows that the system is still functional. Lucky for us, we also happen to have a full adeptus and a human with training in the magic arts. Interesting. So that's what was going through your head. So, an Adeptus and a human need to channel their power at the same time? Yes, if my guess is correct, then when both of you put your full power into the Fantastic Compass, we should be able to completely reactivate it, maybe even reverse it. Last time, it was used to seal the intersection between this place and the chasm. If we can reverse it... Then we're home free. Awesome! So there's still hope? You bet. <sighs> Your idea seems reasonable. Okay, well let's all take a quick break. We'll give this thing a try once we're ready. Oh boy, Paimon's so nervous! Yelon, Xiao, how are we looking? I'm all set. I'm ready. Oh, but Yenfei, there's one thing you might need to mentally prepare yourself for. Hmm? I'm afraid you probably won't be able to take the Fantastic Compass out of here. From what I can tell, everything within this domain is the result of disordered space-time and memories. We all came here for different purposes, and everything that's happened here has been in response to our own imaginations and conjecture. Terrifying, but also a miracle. This space... well, it's more than just a space. Whether there's some kind of higher power at work here, I don't know, but... The whole time, it's been reading our minds and responding to us in the form of illusions. Also, according to the history of the chasm, this place must have existed for a very long time. What could have created it? Oh, that. Yeah, I was there too. Wait a second. It was you that shot that arrow? Who else did you think it was? That snake is probably a remnant of Conrion's civilization, and crystals are highly effective against it. Maybe there was some sort of opposing reaction between those two forces? <sighs> if so, I'm extremely sorry, everyone. It looks like I might be the one responsible for all of this. No, no! You're just trying to help us and solve the problem! You're definitely not to blame for what happened. <laughs> if you say so. You could almost liken this bizarre space to a living being that throws all kinds of hallucinations at us to deceive us. Everyone we've seen here, and all the paths we've walked, it all ceased to exist 500 years ago. Additionally, most of the things here are static. So if we really do manage to escape, then once time starts moving normally again, the fantastic compass will likely disappear. That's actually what I think, too. That's precisely why it's such a miracle that we even found the fantastic compass to begin with. This whole thing feels like we're breaking free from our shackles using a spear that by rights should not exist. This is a long shot, but it may be our last chance. So, whose wish was it that summoned this device? 
Perhaps it was. But maybe there's another reason. Your incredibly strong commitment to your search. It's a shame that we couldn't find your family. But if they were here, I'm sure they'd want nothing more than to see you being rescued from this place. I gotta say, it does intrigue me, the way we all ended up here together. If this is fate, then let's grab it in our hands and turn it around. Leave the boss to Ushi and me. We're ready. Traveler, take care of Paimon. Yenfei, you might need to come closer to me when the time comes. Sure. <sighs> Stars align, bestow your light, evil purged by thunder's might. Spirit curbed, new must surge. By dictum divine, heed these words. Do as I command! <laughs> Fantastic Compass is an amplifier. Maintain this energy level, and we may stand a chance. I will maintain the energy flow. Understood. Everyone, stand back. I shall hold the line by sealing the surface. As Yaksha's, we must fight for this world. General Alatus, falling in! Watch out! <laughs> This trip may be dangerous, yet you insist on going. I have guarded this place for several hundred years. Only to seek the nameless Yaksha do I request your approval. Hmm. <sighs> Hmm. The 
That was close. I thought you were gonna get left behind. I'm so glad you're okay. That was terrifying. <laughs> I know what you were thinking, but... Never mind. I know I can't talk you out of a mindset that's been built up over a lifetime. I don't think we were ever going to reach an agreement over the final strategy. But in the end, it was thanks to you that we managed to escape. So, thank you for saving us all. <sighs> no, I could not have done this on my strength alone. Don't mention it. it. Looks like everyone got out unscathed, but you all look pretty exhausted. Rest up. There's no hurry to move on from here. As for me, I'm gonna check the area for any unusual activity. She's gone! Paimon didn't even get to say thank you! <sighs> Maybe Yaelon really doesn't believe she made a contribution. It seems like she's convinced Xiao saved us all, including her, and she doesn't know what to say to that. And since it's not easy to persuade Xiao of anything, maybe Aelon's just given up trying to talk to him. Xiao, she's criticizing you! I am not! You speak only the truth. I have no quarrel with that. I will keep your words in mind. Really? Well, that's great. I count that as quite an achievement. It was a perilous situation we were faced with underground, and it took every single one of us for any of us to make it out alive. I feel lucky that we didn't lose anyone along the way. Hey, so... Bull Checker still hasn't woken up yet. Surely he's not gonna stay asleep forever, is he? Let's go check on him. Ah, <sighs> <sighs> slept like a rock. Ugh, good times. Huh? Uh, what you doing? What's going on? Why are you looking at me like that? Are you in any pain? if you're not feeling well. You weren't that bright to begin with, so if we add brain damage to the equation... Oh, brother. The heck are you guys talking about? I'm fine! I had an epic power nap, and now I feel like a million mora. Huh. I feel like I'm forgetting something, though. Uh... Oh, yeah! Wait, weren't we underground? How did we get back up here? It's a long story. We'll fill you in later. Ito, we're indebted to you, Shinobu, and Ushi. We couldn't have escaped this predicament without your help. I'm the reason you all got caught up in this. Please accept my apologies, and let me find some way to compensate you for the trouble. Bah, crazy talk! You helped us first! Of course we're gonna return the favor. Hey, if it weren't for you, we'd still be in a Liyue jail cell right now. That's not quite correct. You'd be in jail, not me. <laughs> Good point. Well, okay then. How about this? To celebrate our newfound friendships, how about you let me take you to Leah Harbor for some sightseeing and a proper meal? I like the sound of that. Now that you mention it, whew, I am famished. Oh, I can barely walk here. I'm hungry too, Senpai. Why don't we head straight over? Well, I promise I'll take good care of your friends from Inazuma. Take it easy, okay? What we just went through was... a lot. <laughs> oh, wait! Yaelon left already. I was gonna treat her to some tea. But I'll take this to mean we're square. <laughs> Is that right? Wow, 
Okay, I'll let him know. Traveler, Flying Lavender Melon, Ushi has a couple words he'd like you to pass on for him. What? Oh, I want to hear this. Me too. Count me in. Good idea! Let's do that! Paimon never would have guessed that Ushi was so gentle and thoughtful. Never judge a bull by its cover, huh? <sighs> Sometimes the profoundest truths can also be the simplest. I think Ushi's words may well come in handy. You betcha! Just leave it to us! All right, Ito, Shinobu, Ushi, let's go. Oh, yeah! Grub time! <clears throat> See you next time. Finished taking care of business? Oh, there wasn't any business. We were just saying goodbye to our friends. <laughs> You're still here. I saw the two Inazumans leave with Yenfei, heading towards Liyue Harbor. Aren't you going with them? We still had some stuff we wanted to say to Xiao. Hmm, I figured as much. I've checked the area. Nothing strikes me as out of the ordinary. Looks like this chapter has come to a close. Now, I just need to take care of the confidentiality issues. <laughs> Let's hope our friends from overseas can keep their mouths shut. For their own sakes. Uh, we got it, we got it! We'll make sure they don't say anything! Please don't hurt them. Oh. You figured me out, huh? <laughs> All right, I'll quit pulling your leg. Everyone really rose to the occasion this time. I won't ever forget what we went through. Where could that strange space have come from? And how has it existed down there undetected for so many years? I have to investigate this further. I have a feeling that whatever lies behind all this runs deep. Maybe so deep that no one can be allowed to know. Also... I think someone helped us out at the last minute. They did a good deed, of course, but... Somehow I couldn't tell anything about them. It must have been someone of great importance. <sighs> anyway, these questions will have to wait for another time. I have some follow-up work to do and reports to make. So it's back to Liyue Harbor for me. See you when I see you. You knew I was waiting for you? Really? Hmm. <laughs> There's somewhere I want to go. If you have the time, you can join me. Where is it? A place that has to do with the Yakshas. The temple up ahead was built to remember Pervases. Maybe I came here because I had a realization. You mean, back when we were underground? It's hard to put into words. Seeing Bosatius gave me the false impression that I'd traveled back into the past. You could dress up the Yaksha's life and call us valiant warriors, veterans of war. But, the truth is, we are slaughterers and nothing more. For Bosatius, Perhaps dying in the heat of a great battle was no tragedy. And perhaps the same is true for me. After living so long, to die in the act of saving others would not have been a terrible thing. Hmm. So maybe... These thoughts are my own form of insanity. Hey, don't say that! Very important. Hmm? Ushi said he has the power to exercise demons, so people use him to fend them off. But after he met Ito, he's never left his side. He also said.
said that he doesn't have any grand philosophies. He just thinks we should spend our lives around the people who make us happiest. Maybe there aren't so many rules about how we should or shouldn't live our lives in this world after all. So, he hopes you can come to understand that even though the power of a yaksha may be harmful to other people, it doesn't mean you shouldn't hang out with them. Yep, like people with visions. They have more resistance against your power, right? And, and... Well, anyway, there's loads of people out there who really care about you. <laughs> Suddenly you sound a lot like Bosatius and the others. They used to talk about how they hoped to live a mortal's life once the world was at peace. I think I was the only one who didn't think that way. The Bosatius recorded in the Fantastic Compass had lost his sanity. He addressed the people around him as Alatus, Minogius, and others. These are the names of the five Yakshas. I am Alatus, and Minogius is General Capesis. The others are Bonanus, or General Chisapis, and Indarius, or General Musatis. I heard that people call the five of us Yakshas, the Guardian Adepti. <laughs> Bosatius and Yelon's ancestors stayed underground to the end. So that space must have read their minds in their last moments as they approached death. Yelon was right in everything she said. Both of our proposals had their drawbacks, and both were sensible suggestions. But the power of that space was far beyond all of us. I couldn't have done all I did without everyone's help. Even in the final moments, it took every bit of my power to break free from that place. Well, Paimon still thinks you are amazing. Yenfei and Yelan are correct. I always prepare for the worst case scenario. This mindset is deeply rooted in me. Even so, it was the most optimistic solution I could think of. If Rex Lapis hadn't saved me in that moment, I don't think I would have been able to escape. In the end, I still had to burden another. But that's how it should be, right? You've known Zhang Li, uh, Rex Lapis, for such a long time. And you've helped him before, so he helped you back. What's the big deal? Perhaps. In the moment that we escaped from that space, I could sense what was left of Bosatius' memory. If I had to say what I gained from this trip, I think that would be it. It's good that one more person will remember him. Mm, Minogius, where have you been? <sighs> Brother Yakshai, you're confused again. I've told you countless times, I am Boyang, a thaumaturge who fought with you in the chasm. Boyang? Boyang? You are Boyang, but who am I? <laughs> Believe me, I want to know as much as you do. Here we are, the two who agreed to stay here together, and I can't even call you by your name. It's a shame. Stay here? No. No, you have to leave. Uh, uh, nonsense, Brother Yaksha. <sighs> We're down here for good now. Don't you remember? It, it's too late to have regrets. The seal can't be broken. The seal... Ah, <gasps> oh, yes. I'm a Yaksha who came here to fight. Brother, brother. Are you okay? <laughs> Look at the state of me. I don't think I've got long now. <laughs> We're the only two left. Don't go dying on me. <sighs> you know, today I saw my family down here. Clear as day. What do you think? Am I losing my mind now too? Hmm. Boyong. Do you want to go home? 
I made my decision to leave Zhong Zhao up on the surface. I obviously... <sighs> of course I want to go home. I must have... family too. You mean brothers and sisters? I'm sure you do. Brothers and sisters. Yes, but who am I? And where is my family? I'm... Brother! What's wrong? Hang in there. It's just you and me, don't... Don't die before me. Alatus, is that you? Who's Alatus? Your memory's calling again. <coughs> I'm sorry. You all have to see me in this state. Brother! Brother! Look, there's someone over there. Who are they? They're... They're my... My... I remember now. I know you. <laughs> My brothers and sisters have come for me, Boy Young. You're... You're awake? At least... At least tell me your name. Brother! Brother Bosatius. <laughs> hey, Bosatius. Bosatius. I... I am Bosatius, and my destiny is to make the ultimate sacrifice. I've said so much today, but I don't need to hold back as much when I talk to you. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like you were aware of your destiny? The potential of life? The approach of death, whatever it might have been, by now, I have accepted that destiny is the one disaster that the Yaksha know most keenly of all. We are destined to misery, and yet we have no fear. Xiao... It matters not. Rex Lapis had said that you are a witness. It is right that the events of the world are relayed to you. Bonanus, Minogius, and Indarius all perished, and only Bosatius' fate was unknown. This has always stung my heart like a thorn. That is why I went to the chasm, despite being fully aware of the danger. Now that I know what happened in the chasm back then, I can finally put this matter to rest. Before we left that place, I picked up a stone. I thought if I could take it out with me, I would place it in the temple to Pervases in memory of Bosatius. Unfortunately, the stone did not survive. Pervases died in the Archon War thousands of years ago. He was younger than us. And Bosatius was very sad when he passed. Too many Yakshas have become casualties of battle. We are like a flock of birds, scattered to the four corners of the world. And in the end, as Bonanus said... It's rare for a Yaksha to find repose for their soul. Bosatius, Boyang, and all those soldiers. Heroes. I like that word. Maybe the world will never be free of disaster. But there is good in the world, too. Even the darkest hearts have room for those they cherish. I accept your advice. From this day on, Heroes will always look out for each other. <laughs>